what really happened in the Garden of Eden from the serpent's perspective and the way that I see it. All the trees in the Garden of Eden were beautiful flowering trees that God had made. They were all made of God and they were of God. All the trees were good and provided abundance to Adam and Eve. The only tree in the Garden of Eden that was my tree that produced my seed of the serpent was the tree of the knowledge of good and bad. So Genesis 3, 1 through 7. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Hmm, question, question. Did he really say that? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, which means that bad entered into their experience. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? The man Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life, and I will put enmity, that's hatred, between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. I am a fruit of the Spirit, because I come from a tree that has beautiful blossoms of apple trees, and I produce an apple, such as myself, and I produce seeds. So Galatians 5, 16 through 17 talks about walking in the Spirit. God says then, walking in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. So, that you do not do the things that you wish. This means that your prayers are not heard and they're not answered by God, because you operate in the flesh. Not the God, the most high God, maybe the pagan gods. But if you are led by the fruit of the spirit, you are not under the law. And the fruits of the Spirit are number one. I am a passion fruit. 
and I represent perfect love of the fruit of God. I am the fruit of strawberries. I represent joy and happiness. I am a fruit of a banana and I represent peace and serenity, which are one of God's fruit of the spirits and one of my favorites. I am a fruit of a peach tree and I represent long suffering and patience, which is another personality trait of Jehovah, Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Most High God. I represent a fruit of a pineapple and I represent the personality trait of Jehovah, Jesus and the Holy Spirit of kindness. I'm a fruit of a watermelon and I represent the fruit of goodness. And it's also the personality trait of Jehovah, Jesus and the Holy Spirit of the fruit of goodness because that is who he is. I represent a fruit of an apple and I represent the fruit of faithfulness. So God's personality and who he is, he represents the fruit of faithfulness because that's who Jehovah Jesus and the Holy Spirit are. I am a fruit of a lemon and I represent the fruit of gentleness and the personality of Jehovah Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Most High Spirit is the fruit of gentleness, which is what I am. I represent the fruit of an orange tree and I represent the fruit of self-control. And our God's personality represents self-control. That's who God is. There are nine fruits of the Spirit and they all represent the actual personality and the tree of fruit that represent Jehovah Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They actually re represent his personality and who and what he is. Everything opposite of the fruit of the Spirit belongs to the enemy, the serpent. Now the serpent is going to tell you what his tree of good and bad introduced into the human experience. I, the serpent, introduced the tree of the knowledge of good and bad. And in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, it says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are. Now this flesh represents the tree and the things that I introduced with the personality of the serpent, also known as Satan, into the human variable of Adam and Eve, your ancestors. Number one, adultery. Number two, fornication. Number three, uncleanness. Number four, lewdness. Number five, idolatry. That's worshiping me or any other God that's not the most high God, which is Jehovah, the, his son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Number six, sorcery and witchcraft, which is anything that's not of the Holy Spirit and represents the satanic system. Number seven that I introduced, hatred. Number eight, contentions. Severe judgment, because you're better than everyone else and you have the right to judge them. Basically, you get to be like God. But I, I'm the one, I'm the tree that introduced contention and judgment and contempt prior to investigation. Number nine, jealousies. Pretty obvious. Number 10, outbursts of wrath. Justifiable anger and you just do whatever you want. So when you're angry, you just unleash and you let everyone pay the price. Number 11, selfish ambitions. Number 12, dissensions. Basically, unhappy people, nobody that can be in any agreement. Now think about this. If God's creation can agree to disagree on everything and you have the spirit of contention... Then when two of you don't get together in prayer, you have no power. I isolate you because of I, I create dissension and strife amongst you and you are isolated and destroyed. Basically, I'm going to conquer and destroy you and conquer and destroy and divide you so that you don't have power to go to Jesus, Jehovah and the Holy Spirit. 
to come against me. Number 13, heresies. Those are lies against the truth, which I represent the lie and everything that's false and everything that is untrue. I represent heresies against the truth of God. I introduced envy. When you envy someone else or something else, you become miserable and unhappy and you can't have joy. Because joy and happiness, that's not part of my seed. But envy and dissatisfaction and whoredoms and wanting to take what other people have, that's the seed that I introduced. Number 15, murders. This means abortion, murders by sorcery and witchcraft, murders by addiction, murders by suicide. I introduced the seed of murder into the human variable. Number 16, drunkenness. Basically, drunk people do whatever they want, are selfish, and don't care how they affect others because when they're too drunk, they can't think. They can't reason. And so I introduced drunkenness into the human variable. And when you get drunk, the spirit of drunkenness, which is when you get drunk, the spirit of alcohol comes upon you and you bring your boundaries down and you open your gates so that me and my little minions and all my little friends, we can take over and do whatever we want. So if we want to rape or murder or lust or steal or do all of these things I introduced, there's nothing holding us back. We do whatever we feel like doing it, whenever we feel like doing it. Number 17, rivalries. This is basically people just not getting along. And again, they can't be in agreement. And the reason why the serpent doesn't want God's human creation in agreement is because when two or three of God's children come into agreement about anything, God hears their prayer because it God manifests and he hears the prayer and their prayers are answered as long as they're walking in the, in the spirit.